Uh, but I want to welcome in the head coach at Campbell University in North Carolina, Justin Hare. Justin, thanks for jumping on with us. Thanks, Sheets. I appreciate you uh, asking me to be here and uh, been a great convention and looking forward to finishing out the next day or so here. It's awesome. Well, it's a no-brainer because, I, I, you know, obviously we're close friends, but I think it's easy for me. Like, I want to start a new Twitter account. Justin Hare's goatee, and I just needed a closer look so that I had maybe a screenshot that I can use for the for the the, the avatar. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I, I'm here to help your social media game, and <laughs> Thank if you. Uh, if we can grow the brand of the sheets in any way, shape, or form, I'm I'm here to help you with that. Oh boy, it's gonna go south in a hurry. Um, <laughs> You know, there's so much I want to go into, but uh, one in particular is, and we were just talking before we got recording, uh, our friendship and it birthing from ABCA. And uh, Ricky McCarty, head coach at Abilene Christian, still hanging around. Um, his relationship, our friendship, he being a Kentucky guy, and him saying, hey, man, I got a guy that is your brother from another mother. Man, you guys need to spend some time together. And that's been seven, eight years ago. And him saying, hey, let's just find a way that you guys can connect. And you and I in a hotel room, talking for hours yeah. about anything and everything around the game. And uh, to me, and I want to see hear your thoughts on this, to me that accentuates what the ABCA period is about, but what this is, this convention, this experience, this brotherhood is all about. You see it that way? Yeah, there's there's no doubt. I, that might have been in, in, in Dallas, you know, maybe possibly. two times ago in yeah. Dallas now, yeah. you know, it, at the old place, at the Anatole. The Anatole. Yeah, you know, I, I, maybe. I don't we, we, Heck, there's been so many. <laughs> so that many. The inside of those hotels all look about the same. But, right. but I think that is that is what the ABCA is all about. And we talk about it being a brotherhood and a fraternity mm -hmm. a lot. And, and um, you know, that that moniker, I think, just just really stamps itself on stories like that. And, and that could be anybody. That could be anybody walking around no here. Doubt. And, and, you know, the, the first couple of times you go to a convention – you don't know anybody, and, you know, now here it is, my 14th convention in 15 years, and yep. you can't walk down the hall without knowing somebody. That's you right. Know? And, and I think that's where, you know, from two guys that were working in NAI and Division Two ball yep. and whatever to, you know, the opportunities that we've had in this game and the yep. friendship that we've been able to yep. build and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And in what other world and what other um, business – do they have something like that? I don't know of any. Sure. You know, I, I know of a lot of other sports that are jealous of the the association that we do have right. and, and the strength and the bonding and the, and the brotherhood that that this uh, you know that this offers us. Take me into how this Dallas convention's gone for you, because I think it's it's a neat dynamic, especially as younger coaches pay attention to this. Um, showing up on campus, what you're, what you're most excited about when you get here, and then certainly how it is day-to-day -day for you walking around. You know, each, each, each convention of the setup's the same. You know, you got Thursday, you get here, yeah. you get checked in, you got your meetings, you got all that kind of stuff. You know, but every year it's different because you don't know who you're going to run into. But that's, that's right. it's it's kind of like going back to school for the first day. You're like, <laughs> man, call. I haven't seen my buddies in a while. That's like, it. you know, and this this might be the one time a year that I might sit down with Rick McCarty or I might see um, Gary Vaught or I might see Rick Odette. You right. know, guys that, that I've touched base with throughout my career that are now all over the country. That's right. Um, you know, like you said, we're an hour and a half from each other and we see each other three times a year because it's right. busy. You know, yeah. we all have – jobs to do and all that kind of stuff but the energy of Dallas has been you know awesome you know yeah. I thought Indianapolis last year was outstanding I know coming into the 75th anniversary it continues to grow it continues to get better yeah. but the growth is not just in in the membership it, the numbers keep going up and all that but the vision of what we want the convention to look like sure. and how we can continue to grow the game and how it can be a better event for the people that are attending. Right. Like there's been a lot of thought and planning that have gone into that from where the clinics are held and where the expo theater has gone in just yeah. three years yeah. from in the middle of the, in the middle of the trade show to now it's got its own space. And now we got the youth clinics and we've got a lot of different things and a lot right. of different opportunities to learn, but to also connect and and grow and the energy has just been awesome man like yeah. the positive energy like it, it was one o'clock in the morning on on thursday you know or, you know early friday morning and and i mean i was still going strong i go to bed at 10 o'clock every night man like it's one Not central here. and i'm like i'm in the hallways breaking it down with catching coordinators for the dodgers and the phillies and whatever like yep. guys i've never met and it's just they 
it, it, you just don't get it everywhere or anywhere sure. else, man. It's just it, it's the energy's been awesome, man. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's run really smooth and gets better every year. Sure. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, it's funny because I had a conversation with a young coach on the hot stove last night, and um, you know, you had the typical guys out in our baseball community that are figureheads, Tim Corbin specifically, and he says, you know, Sheets, I'd really love for you if you could you could work a an angle for me to meet Tim Corbin, and I said. I'm going to do you one even better. When you see Tim Corbin walking around, you just walk right up to him and you introduce yourself. Yeah. I don't need to be there. I don't need to set up the group. When you see him do it, do you remember having kind of that feeling? And I know I do as well, but do you remember having that kind of feeling with guys? 100%. Yeah. 100%. How would you get over it? How would you move past it? I just – just like what you said, you just do, you know, and, and – and, and, you know, I, I teed re- you up for that. Yeah. <laughs> you just do, just just like anything else, like Jocko Willing <laughs> said, just, just, do, just it. do it. Like, yeah. just yeah. – you know, I mean, that's, that's it. Like, you just um, – I think the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I mean, yeah. there's st- – I mean, I, you know, this is my 15th year – uh, in the ABCA, I certainly am not a big dog. I certainly do not know everybody or anything like that. But, I mean, I still have those moments now. You right. know, I see Gene Stevenson out, you know, legendary coach at Wichita State, and I'm like, oh, man, like I've talked to him a couple of times, but he doesn't really know who I – you know, like sure. there's always that, you know. But at the same time, you know, you get the opportunity to connect and meet and, yep. and say hello to people. And, uh, you know, I just remember walking around my first convention in Nashville, I think in 2004, 2005, you know, and, and you know, my boss at the time, Scott Nora, he knew everybody, what seemed like everybody. And now yeah. I'm sure some of my younger assistants, they probably feel the same way. Like, gosh, dang, we can't walk through the thing without you stopping to say hello Every to five everybody. Steps. Like, yeah. You know, but that's just part of it, man. That's the fun part of, uh, you know, coming back every year and being a part of that. But I think, you know, for those young guys and, and for all of us, man, it's right. just most 99% of the dudes that show up here, check their ego at the door, and they're here to have fun and, and learn and be around other baseball guys that's and awesome. be around like-minded people. So if you're 22 or you're 62, it doesn't really matter. We're all kind of here for the same purpose. And so if you put that first in your mind, I think then it becomes a lot easier to walk up to guys like Coach Corbin and uh, Mike Martin and, you know, who oh, you know all those sure. legendary guys that, that are walking around here that, you know, Jim Sloss, Nate, all those guys. Yeah. Man. And it's, it's pretty cool to be sitting, you know, you sit, you know, two rows over from those guys. They're taking notes. You're taking notes. You're like, man, maybe, I, maybe I'm on to something here. I'm a, I'm a jump on that point in that, uh, you know, Clint Hurdle came on the podcast, manager for the Pirates, mm-hmm. and uh, I told the story on the show a couple weeks ago is that he asked, you know, Sheets, why, why do you think I need to, to be part of this? What are, you, what are you trying to get out of it? I said, Clint, I really feel like the, the mission of what our conversation could be is that they're going to hear you talk about relationships. They're going to hear you talk about personal growth. They're going to hear you talk about mistakes you've made. They're going to hear you be humble. They're going to hear all that. And they're also going to think back to other episodes and go, oh, it's funny because the Division One coach and then the D2 coach and the D3 and the NAI guy and the high school guy and the youth guy, they all said the same exact thing. I said, we're all the same dude. We just have with different uniforms. He's like, I'm in. Let's go. Hit record. <laughs> you know, but, that, but that, yeah. to, to the point is just that uh, we all are in the same journey together. No one has all the answers. We're all here to get better. We're here to network and grow and, uh, and grow that net for sure. Sure. But we're also here to challenge our thoughts and try to get better and find a better way, new way of saying something, whatever it might be, and move forward. No doubt. I, you know, and I, I think that's, again, that's, that's been, you know, part of my growth through the association and through the conventions and, and through everything that you guys have been doing from the podcast to, you know, just, just more access to the association. Right, you know, right. when, when I first joined, it was like you came to the convention, that was the association. They were one and the same. Now yeah. it's so much more, yeah. the barnstormers, all that stuff, man. Yeah. And it's just been um, awesome because, you know, like, like, you know, watching Link Jarrett on stage yesterday, you know, I remember when I first got to North Carolina and he was at East Carolina and they were rolling. He was yeah. working for Billy Godwin and I was like, man, like we got to compete against that guy. I've been trying to compete against that guy for 12 years, you yeah, know, and no like, doubt. but it's fun to see those guys, you know, get up on the main stage and, and crush it, you yeah. know, because I'm like, I work with that dude. I've recruited, I've sat right next to that dude on the recruiting trail for yeah. years, yeah. you know, guys like that up there, just, you know, Donegal Fergus. I mean, one of the first 
NWAC guys that we ever got at Campbell, he sent me, you know, from, from Tacoma Community College. Yeah. And he's up there talking about recruiting and, and coming off a World Series appearance and stuff. So just just a lot of cool relationships for guys that, you know, over the last 10 or 12 years, man, you all start. You, you, we all start somewhere. That's right. And I'm the same guy I was when I was working at Sterling College, you yep. know, in, in 2004 yep. as I am now. It's just, like you said, we got different uniforms on. and. That's it. Ferg's the same dude he was when he was at Tacoma and sandals and all. Yeah, same I mean dude. he's probably crazier now. You know, gosh <laughs> dang. Now, I mean, you know, he finally gets out of the Pacific Northwest and he can he he's can really be himself now. Hundred <laughs> percent, and he's embraced it fully. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I got I got to give you this. You mentioned twelve years uh, in Carolina and uh, watching the Campbell program grow into what it is today. I mean, last year your great run. Uh, taking the Big South trophies home with you. But if you think about that program and what it was when you got there mm -hmm. and, and and seeing what it's grown to, take us through that journey over these last few years. Where was it to where it is now? Yeah, so when we got there, um, Greg Goff was, you know, got the, the job in the summer of 2007 yep. um, from a Division II school, University of Montevallo in Alabama. I was working at Washita Baptist University in Arkansas as the assistant. Um, and uh, he called me, asked me if I wanted to come work for him. And, and uh, we had built a good relationship through playing against each other, really. I mean, we didn't know each other previous right. to that or anything like that. So we show up there in August of 2007. Man, he's coming off of a, you know, World Series and a, and a regional final. We're coming off a 50-win season at Washita. Like, yep. hey, man, we're about to roll. Like, you know, that, that was our, you yep. know, thought process. And, and, you know, they were 11, you know, Campbell was 11 and 45 in 2007 right you know and we're like man we got some work to do but we're, we're going to get this thing spun around yeah. and um you know it's funny now you look back on it I, I remember the first time that i showed up i'm like man this field's awesome this is great we got a huge scoreboard this that and the other like now i look back at pictures and i'm like it's, it was a high school <laughs> you know I mean, it was like <laughs> was it wasn't nearly as big as i thought it was yeah it wasn't as nice as yeah. i thought you know at the time you know yeah. from where we were coming from it was nice you know and we had a recruiting budget which is something that we never had before but sure. now if i look back at our budget numbers you know 12 years later it's Thank like goodness holy cow yeah. like you know, so so we just had, uh, you know, we had an uphill climb to get back to, yeah. to sea level, right, you know, and, right. and, which was fine. We didn't know any better. I was 26. Coach Goff was 36, you know, and, and he'd been a head coach for four years. And um, we just just wanted to attack it. And so we needed to kind of find our niche. What type of player do we need to recruit? Where do we need to go from a facility standpoint? How could we – you know, really get in the race. And, and, you know, Campbell's just a really special place because there's a lot of really good people there right. and people that care about the program and the school. And, 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 and so our program's growth over the last 12 years of never of, – of the school record for wins being 33 when we got there to, you know, now we've got the top five winningest right. seasons in school history. We've had three straight years of 40 wins. We've been to two regionals. They'd only been to one regional ever right. in school history. We've won, you know, four or five conference championships. They had only won two, you know, in 55 years. So, you know, we've been able to do a lot of those things. You know, we put $6 million into our facility, yep. and it's one of the best facilities in the region, you know, and, and certainly in our conference. But – on top of that, the schools continue to grow. Right. You know, where there's like 1,500 more students than when we got there 12 years ago. They've added new dorms. We're building a, you know, 110,000 square foot student union right now, wow. $38 million. Like, so wow. it's been fun to see that growth and, and you know, see the, the school continue to grow and get better. Mm -hmm. And, and our program, one, have a little bit to do with that because because we've had some success. Sure. But also be able to mirror that growth and, and you know, try, you know, ultimately you want to have the ability to help build a program that people can be proud of. Yes. I, I think that's ultimately where you want to be, at least for me, that, I, you know, I've always said that. I don't care where it was. I didn't care if it yep. was it in Hamilton, Ohio you know, where I went to high school or, you know, LSU. You, you want to ha have yeah. your hand in building a program that the people that played there can be really, really proud to have put on those colors and yeah. that emblem and whatever. And, and that's been the funnest part of the last 12 years is that I feel like we took a program that was not in a good spot. We've worked really hard, and we're, we're to the point where now – 
you know, it's almost a destination. We Over yeah. the last 10 years, we've had guys from 31 different states and two different countries play for us. That's unbelievable. And there's a lot of guys that are really, really proud to say they wore the black and orange. And that's – and that's been the funnest part over the last 12 years. Gosh, I love it. I mean, you got so much to offer this community. That's, that's why, you know, our, our phone calls at times, we challenge each other and we yeah. and we, we really do. We push each other for growth, and it's it's one that I, I love. More than that, it's your spirit and your energy and your passion to grow and learn and share and obviously uh, be a contributing member of this fraternity, man. We truly appreciate you doing it. Well, I appreciate it, man. I just know, you know, I mean, that's, you know, that's the, you know, the, the, especially the last couple of years, man, since you've been in North Carolina, it's been, yep. a, you know, we've really been able to, to kind of, you know, build our relationship and challenge each other. I think we yep. lean on each other. We bounce ideas <laughs> off of each other. We vent. Yeah, 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 all of it. I call you and I'm like, see, I'm <laughs> running my head you. through this yeah. wall, man. I need oh, yeah. you to, I need you to break it down for me, you I know? know? And um, so that's been really fun, man. And, and, and that's, that's drawn me closer into the association, man. And sure. I know you've been able to do that with a lot of other people and, um, Bart and all those guys, man, it, it's been fun to see what's happened over the last four years with the association and, yeah. and how much more – it's not just the convention anymore. You right. know, we talked about that last yeah. week on the phone. Yeah. Like, it's not just – the ABCA, when I joined 15 years ago, it was the convention. You didn't right. get anything else out of it, you yeah. know, whatever, maybe some job postings, you right. know, in the summer. Oh, you know that those, website but, out. Yeah, you know, yeah. but other than that, that, that was it. Now there's so much more um, – and it's so much more open and welcoming and, and sure and there's so many more resources man and and so i can't thank you guys enough for for opening that up and having the vision to do that mm -hmm. and the vision to keep pushing the association forward because again right. like i said there's a lot of other sports and there's a lot of other industries that don't have this that are jealous of what we've been able to create sure. a, as a sport and as a, a as an association so been a lot of fun man and and uh, looking forward to to seeing what happens over the next four or five years i'll tell you man it only works with coaches like you it really does I, uh, we love the compliments and our staff and our team has done a fantastic job but it only works if our coaches buy in so yep. uh, you've been a huge piece of that go continue to crush the floors here at dallas <laughs> justin i know you are uh, keep bebopping we got about a, a total of about a day you know a half a day and yeah. then another half left but uh enjoy your time in dallas man thanks for jumping appreciate on it with man us. thanks for having me no doubt